Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our left panel. Okay, so I have put a link in the description of this video. Um, and actually I should probably mention that I use my Cricut Maker and Cricut Design Space to design this page. If you don't have a Cricut machine and therefore don't use Cricut Design Space, um, you'll, you'll wanna figure out something else that you wanna do with this page, but that's just what I chose to do and that's, <laughs> that's how I know to do it by using Cricut Design Space and my Cricut machine. So if you have that and you wanna do the same thing I'm doing, there is a link in the description that'll take you directly to this project that I created in Cricut Design Space and I saved it to the public files, okay? So the project, once you open it, you'll see that it has three pieces. This one is outlined in all black, you'll see in the project. Um, this one is pink in the project. And then this one I believe is gray with pen lines, okay? And it is programmed to cut and the, to, to draw the lines and then cut this piece out. So everything is ready for you to just hit make. But you just wanna pay attention. This one is black, that one you're gonna cut from your cardstock. The pink one is supposed to be decorative paper. So that's what you'll cut from decorative paper. And the light gray piece with the squares in it that are drawn on, um, that is just whatever you want. I just chose, I just chose some heavy printer paper. Not as heavy as my cardstock, but not regular printer paper either. It's actually cardstock, but it's not the type of cardstock that you would use to scrapbook. It's more like the type of cardstock you would use like in, um, in an office environment. Okay, so let's go ahead and set all this off to the side. I'm gonna get out my scoreboard. So this piece here, which we have cut. Okay, hope you can see that all right. So we are gonna put that in the scoreboard and you'll see that one, one of the border, one of the four sides, it's got four borders, four sides, a <laughs> border all the way around. One of them is a lot thinner. The other three are thicker. We're gonna score on those three sides at one half of an inch, okay? All right, so that leaves us with this, okay? And then what we wanna do is we want to cut off those squares that were created when the score lines intersected. So there should be two of them. And that is what we have, okay? And then we can fold and burnish on those three score lines. Okay, so there's that. And when we're ready, this is going to our car, the pink piece in your file that you will cut from decorative paper. That is going to be our decorative frame, okay? And then this piece here, this is kind of, I mean, I, I guess there are probably better ways, more efficient ways to do this, but this is gonna be my template to paste stuff on here, pictures, design paper, whatever. But this fits in here, okay? perfectly and if you actually this is exactly eight and a half so this is going to need to be trimmed down a tiny bit so do it evenly so maybe take off a sixteenth of an inch on this side and a sixteenth of an inch on this side okay then it will fit inside there okay and those lines are hidden as they should be that's how I made it okay but what they, but those, what purpose those lines serve is, like I said, you can use that as your template to decide what you want to put there. So, I may stamp a picture on this one. I might take my picture, my camera stamp, and stamp it here so that whoever gets this album knows to paste a picture here. 
I may do the same thing here, here, wherever. And for these other squares, I'll take decorative paper, which I'm not gonna use these because they're identical to the border, but I'll, you know, I'll take decorative paper, cut it down to the size and then glue it on. Um, so I will show you that when I'm done there. Um, so then the next thing we need is we need crafters plastic and that needs to be eight and a half by 10. So let's grab that. Okay, I'm sorry. I think earlier I said that this is eight and a half. It's actually eight and a quarter, which this was obviously cut correctly because it was programmed to do so. <laughs> but for your crafters plastic, yeah, you need to cut this eight and a quarter by 10. And I went like a sixteenth of an inch shorter just so that it fits nicely in there without bending the cardstock, okay? And if you feel like it's, if you feel like the cardstock is warping your, or yeah, if you feel like If you feel like it's not sitting in there perfect, just take another 16th of an inch off. I can't decide if it is or if it's not. Oh yeah, it's there's plenty of space in there, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So what we wanna do next is we want to take our double-sided tape Okay, and we want to run it. Along the border of this piece, not on the not on the half inch flaps, just on the inside border, okay? Make sure you use your finger to guide the uh, the tape down. Don't yank here to get it down because that could warp your paper. Burnish that down real well. And then we can go ahead and take this <clears throat> and we can adhere it down. So I'm going to get mine in lined up with the bottom flap. Make sure it's not sticking out of the top. Okay, and then I'm going to hold it down on two sides here and here. Hold it down so it's nice and secure. And then what I do is I remove the other two sides of score tape. And just let it go. And then just dab it into place. You don't wanna, at this point, you don't wanna burnish cause you could push it. So dab it in place. And then once it's not going anywhere, you are safe to burnish. Okay, so then these two are already stuck down. I've just removed the other two and I'm letting the, I'm letting the crafter's plastic just fall into place. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Look how nice that is. So we can go ahead and adhere this on now, but let's take, let me get rid of my trash. Oops. Let's take our panel. I mean our folio. Just see how nicely that sits there. Oh wow, you know what, it overlaps quite a bit. Oh wow, yeah it does. I'm gonna have to cut off the top.
But the top is the only one I can cut off because it's the only open edge. It does, it is slightly too wide, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to take off about an eighth of an inch from the top. So the top is the side that has no half inch flap. And I'm trying really hard not to push down too much because I don't have my piece A flattened out yet. I don't want to hurt its spine. Okay, yeah, that'll work That'll work nicely. So we can go ahead and um, adhere this now. Let me see if I need to cut off a little from the top here as well. I think I like it better like that. I'm just gonna cut like a 16th of an inch off the top. Perfect. It's probably not going to be very easy to glue, <laughs> to glue the center pieces because they're pretty teeny tiny. But we can try. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Let's move this out of the way. <clears throat> I'm gonna flatten these flaps out. Flatten them down. going to decide what I want to do with this and I will come back and show you and then we will adhere this to piece A. Okay so here's what I have. <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna leave these three spaces for pictures. I haven't decided if I'm going to stamp them or not. But basically what I did for these spaces where I wanted to put decorative paper I just kind of measured and cut out my decorative paper and glued them straight to this template, which will slide right in here, okay? So to get this glue down, I'm gonna, this is not going to sit inside of it while we're adhering this, so I'm gonna set this to the side. And we want to make sure that all of our pieces are out of the way. So this whole B, C, D unit is off to the left. I've got these flaps opened up and out of the way. And this flap is, obviously I can't really move that out of the way <laughs> because A is on top of it, but flatten it out. And then you can bring A over and flatten that out, okay? And we can even take a scrap piece of paper underneath of it. Okay, so to adhere this, you wanna make sure that your flaps are on the right and the left and the bottom. There's no flap at the top. And I'm going to adhere glue to my right flap first. And then I'm going to make sure that that is adhered directly up against the edge, not covering it, not going into the spine, but just up against this edge. Lined up with the bottom and the top. Okay. 
Make sure that spine is flattened out so you're not causing stress to it when you burnish. I am not left-handed. <laughs> see if I can do this. Okay. There we go. So mine is hanging over the edge of A quite a bit, but I am not gonna let that bother me. I'll probably alter this file so that it's the right size for you. Okay, so now we can apply glue to our other two flaps. <music> So there we go. So we can slide that in. Might have to trim a little bit off now that it's adhered down. That's pretty typical for it to buckle a little bit. Okay, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so there is panel A. Okay, so when we do some decorating toward the end of the book, um, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably put some more stuff out here, you know, attached, you know, like maybe in the corner where it slightly overlaps the windows, but I'm going to save that until the end. But for now, there we go. And then for the back of A, we're going to move on and I'm going to show you what I did there. Okay, so we're going to move panel A, open panel A and work on the back side. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for this one, I also have a window frame, just a single window frame, that's gonna double as a shaker window. So it's gonna have a shaker window on top and you're gonna be able to slide a picture through on the bottom. So the first thing I did was just decided what I want is my background piece, okay? So I just measured the back of panel A and cut my scrapbook paper and that's gonna get it here down. Because my window on the front of A was too wide, I've got quite a bit of space there, as you can see, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I should have cut this wider, but I didn't. So anyways, yes, yeah, so figure out what scrapbook paper you want to put here, measure, you know, leave the whatever size border you typically like to leave when you're scrapbooking. That's going to go there, okay? And then also, um, I created this in, again, Cricut Design Space, so I will have the link to this file in the description. This is just called the five by seven frame, I believe. So you've got this larger piece, which accounts for one half inch flaps, which will score. And then this is the, um, this is just this piece, but without that one half inch on the three sides. So this is gonna help us do the shaker window, okay? And then of course you need to get out your crafter's plastic and you need to cut five and a quarter by seven and a quarter crafter's plastic. So once we score these, this is gonna go on the underside, okay? Uh, I actually have two of those, I'm sorry two five and a quarter by seven and a quarter pieces of crafter's plastic. So these two you're gonna cut from my file, okay, that I have linked below called the five by seven frame. 
You're gonna cut two crafters plastic at five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And you also need to decide what scrapbook paper you want to be at the very back of your window, which will get covered up if you decide to put a picture in there, or you can just not put a picture in. Um, but that is also five and a quarter by seven and one quarter. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. So those are all the pieces you need for this piece. Okay, and I do, I believe in the five by seven file, you might have a piece that is, that is the decorative border for this, but I can't, I'm pretty sure I designed that as well in there, but I decided that I would like to do strips instead. So I just went ahead and cut three eighth of an inch strips to put on the very top of my frame. Okay, so I didn't even need to use that border piece in the file. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we want to do, oops, is we need to score this piece. <clears throat> the three sides where they are thicker, we need to score at one half of an inch. squares that were created when our score lines intersected. I really need to figure out how to sharpen my scissors. It's awful. Uh, fold and burnish on the score lines. And then <clears throat> you're going to get out your double sided tape because we need to adhere one of those pieces of crafters plastic to the inside of this piece. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I think I'm missing a roll of tape. There it is. Okay. So you are adhering it to the inside of the frame. You're not putting tape on the flaps, but you're putting tape Okay, uh, burnish that real well. <clears throat> and as I did with the last piece, Cricket, come here, sweetie. I like to situate it in there, make sure it's a nice fit, make sure it's not sticking past the top. Perfect, and then I hold it down on two sides and then I move the tape from the other two sides, or I should say the backing. Let it fall down naturally. Don't burn it straight away because you'll push it. Okay. <clears throat> and then just remove the other two sides. wants to go out back. <laughs> if you can hear that, that's what she's doing. She's pawing at the window. We just got back from being outside for an hour and she wants to go back. <laughs> so there we have that, okay? Okay, so now I am going to take my decorative piece that's going to go inside here. We are gonna set that in as well. Make sure it fits real well. Make sure it's not sticking over the top, okay? I think I will take a sixteenth of an inch off this one of the sides here. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. So now what we're going to do once we have that in place, we're going to hold it there. Make sure it doesn't move around, open up your side flaps and then apply glue to the back of the flaps. Okay, you can just do one at a time if it's easier. But you do want your decorative piece to fit the entire width of this. 
because the flaps need to cover them. <clears throat> so now what'll happen is you can slide a picture down in between the plastic and the decorative piece if you choose to. You can just leave it the way that it is so that you can see that design paper. Okay, so if desired, you can just slide a picture right down in there. Five by seven would fit perfectly, okay? So now for the shaker window part, um, what we need to do is we need to basically, it's gonna look like this, but we need to put foam tape on this layer, which is gonna bump up, bump it up. And I think my foam tape is too wide, so I'm probably going to have to figure out how to cut this down because it's all that I have on me. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use foam tape that is not going to overlap our frames here. It's not gonna overlap our, our paper frames. We're gonna lay it from end to end on all, you know, from end to end on all four sides. And then this piece is going to adhere down on top of that, nice and even. Actually, it would probably be better if we put this one on top of the foam tape. Yes, it would be. And then use double-sided score tape to line up this one on top of that, which you could line these two up first so that they're already adhered. Put your foam tape and then put these two down. I didn't watch a tutorial for this. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm making the process harder on myself or not. Um, I like to try to figure things out myself if I can. <laughs> All right, so that's what we'll do. So I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna figure out how to make this thinner. Um, maybe I'll have to run to the store and buy some foam tape, some, a different size, but I'll be right back. Okay, so I was able to just cut that down very quickly. If you're curious how I did that, because maybe you're running into the same issue, um, all I did was take a piece of double-sided score tape or double-sided tape. So I'm wasting this strip of double-sided tape, but that's okay. Uh, stuck it to a piece of, you know, stuck it to something. Made sure my cutting mat was underneath. And then I took my length of foam tape and, and sat it on top of the backing to the double-sided tape. That way it doesn't stick because that's just backing. And then all I did was take my plastic ruler and just cut off an eight, you know, I used the guides on the ruler to um, just cut off an eighth of an inch or however much you need. And then just measure, I just measured this width and this width and this one and that one. That's all I did, okay? And that allowed me to get my foam tape onto my frame at the exact width that I needed it. Okay, so there we have it. And now we need to take, which I just had in front of me, here we go. <clears throat> so we have one more piece of crafters plastic and we have our frame border without the one half inch flaps. So we're gonna go ahead and put those two together. And I'm going to do that by <clears throat> putting a uh, double-sided tape all around the frame, the paper frame, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna burnish that really well. And then very carefully line these two up. So I'm just gonna get them into position, which is not going to be easy because it's gonna slide on the tape backing, but get them into position as best I can. Okay. 
And then when I'm sure it's correct, take off one side. There we go. Let me just make sure <laughs> that looks good before I burnish it. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now it's not going anywhere. And I can remove the others. Okay, so our next step is going to be to go ahead and drop some sequins or whatever you want in your shaker window on here, okay? So just drop it within your foam tape. And then after you've done that, all you're going to do is remove the backing to your foam tape. I would actually not remove the backing. I would line this up and then <laughs> remove one at a time just to make sure you have a perfect fit. Okay, and then after that, we can adhere our strips or your border to this and glue this down. And we have our shaker window. So I'm gonna get some sequins. I don't even know what I want to use yet, but I've got all this stuff. So these, I have so much stuff. Goodness. Mm. So let's see here. So definitely this sea blue, purple, and some form of, I'm not doing glitter. I think glitter is a disaster inside a shaker window. It's just too staticky. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of gold because I have some gold here. Maybe a little bit of like white or see-through. I guess I don't have see-through, but I have what? Oh, I have green too, which would go well with her tail. Okay, well that's close enough to being green, I guess. <clears throat> too many choices here. All right, I think I'll try those and see what happens. Okay, so. <clears throat> let's drop some of these in and I think this stuff okay it does not have glitter in it I don't believe <clears throat> I've never even used this how do I open it to figure this out very carefully. Maybe over the trash can. <laughs> I haven't even opened it yet and I've already got enough. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how this works. Okay. 
I definitely don't want too much because if I decide I want to put a picture behind it, I don't want, I don't want it being, I probably won't put a picture behind it. I don't know, but anyways, <laughs> I would like the option. I've never seen anyone do like a half picture, half shaker window. I, I mean, I've never seen it. Doesn't mean it hasn't been done. Maybe I'll leave the white out. That's kind of cute. So then we'll put that on. We'll, yeah, that's cute. That's perfect, just enough, right? Not too much, not too little. And you can still put a picture in there and it, you know, you would still be able to see that picture really well. So those are not obviously gonna stay yet because I don't have this secured down, but there we go. I'm gonna move all my pieces away from, away from the foam tape because I don't want it sticking as I get that backing off. Okay, which is not easy to do. It wants to go directly to the sides. Okay, so <clears throat> trying to decide if I want more in there or not. Maybe a little bit more purple. Okay, <clears throat> so let's line this up very carefully and uh, probably the sequins are all gonna cling to it because of static. <laughs> <clears throat> so when you feel like you have that on straight as you can get it, I don't wanna stick my head in the camera because, all right. Okay, so there's one side. Oh, broke a nail. Okay, and then we'll do the other sides as well. It's working out pretty well. Okay, <clears throat> so there we have it. I love it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. And then you can still slide a picture down there, as we said, because there's an entire five by seven open space in behind there. Okay, or you can just leave that decorative paper showing. It's whatever you choose. All right, so let me clear up some space and we will get that adhered to our piece A. Okay, so. The only thing with this is that we're gonna have to be real careful when we burnish because I'm not really sure how to burnish this with that big giant spine there. So anyways, <clears throat> we can go ahead and, and adhere our, actually maybe it would be a better idea to take this, adhere that first, okay. wherever you want it, mine's gonna be centered. And we can just apply glue to the entire backside or double-sided tape, whichever you're using. Because that is, we, I, this was designed in such a way that adhering the entire backside is not going to affect its, uh, how well it works in any way, as long as glue doesn't seep from the top.
Looks straight to me. This rag has seen better days. There we go. So now we want to put our border on. Okay. So I'm just gonna glue those down. And my strips measure 3 eighths of an inch wide because the border is one half inch wide. And I usually make my, uh, my decorative pieces about an eighth of an inch shorter than the cardstock. I like little borders. So my borders are, like I said, one half inch wide so the the strips are uh, three eighths wide. Okay, so now we need to come over here and we need to adhere this to A, okay? So I would go ahead and sit the spine up maybe. Actually, yeah, that's probably our best option. To burnish that piece of paper is to make sure all of these panels are flat and then we can flatten out that one. I mean, it's, We've still got this in the way, but. So I'm just opening whatever I can. Here we go. Wait, no. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Okay, wonderful. Where there's a will, there's a way. All right, so I'm just gonna glue this down. I wish I had cut this purple paper wider. I don't love that at, you know what? Oh no, I already glued this. I was gonna say I could just cut a new piece, but no, I can't. <laughs> I could print and then cut a new piece, but ugh. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm a doing it. And I may decide later that I want to, I don't know, do little decorative pieces around the edges. Um, I will decide that. All right, um, so then we can go ahead and move on. So we are still, of course, on the left panel. This was piece A, the front and the back, okay? And now we're gonna move over to units B, C, D. So I've already cut all these pieces, so you just have to decide what you want to use, measure based on what size border you like. But I'm gonna show you exactly what I decided to do. So this is one of the solid pieces, the dark purple. I just cut a strip to go, um, just to go on piece B. I'll flatten out the spine here. Just to go on piece B so that when these, when D and C are down, it just fits that extra space there, okay? And then I did another one, basically the same, um, it's basically sticking out, it's, it's what's showing to the right and to the left of, of D, okay? So again, I used my, the dark purple solid, okay? And then this piece, which was left over from her, I cut that down to fit directly on piece D, okay? So this is D, that is going to fit directly. And I'm probably gonna do like a Kathy Orta type thing where I make a slit here 
so you can stick some stuff in there. I think that's what I'll do. I like how she does that. I think that's really cool. I've only ever done that once and I got the idea from her. I don't have her cool slot punch, of course. I couldn't find it anywhere. I scoured the internet and I just couldn't find it. So I will probably use a hole punch. I'll use my smaller, actually I might have to get out my bigger one because I don't think this is gonna go into the center as well. Um, so let me get that. Okay, so. Uh, so let's see, how do I wanna do this? Um, I think I'll do it right around here. So I will measure three. Three and a half looks good. And maybe I'll use the width of my ruler against the edge. So my ruler is against the edge of the paper and I'm going three and a half inches up. Same thing over here. My ruler is against the edge and I'm going three and a half inches up. Okay, so I'm gonna punch a hole in those two spots Okay. And then I'm just gonna use my ruler and a straight edge. Ooh, I'm sorry, my ruler is my straight edge. I'm gonna use my, some form of straight edge and my craft knife. And I am just going to connect the top of one circle to the top of the other. Okay, let's see how that works. Oh, it's crooked. Ugh. Yep, it's crooked big time which means when I punched my holes, I didn't have them lined up perfectly over my pencil mark. See, it'd be nice if I had that slot punch. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what I can do here to fix that. too pretty on the ends. But it's straight. <laughs> I'll probably get out one of my, it, actually I don't think I have one small enough. My smallest one is probably too big. Actually, no, that'll work would still be pretty. It would just be a big circle there at the end, like a decorative circle there at the end. Let's see how that works out. not what I was going for in the beginning, but I would say in the end it worked out. Okay, so I am gonna go with it. So when we glue this down on the back side, we wanna make sure that we put glue on the border. Uh, well, of course we want, we want glue everywhere. We just don't want to cover up underneath of this cutout because we're gonna stick things in there. And if we have glue, 
we're in trouble, but you do want glue on the bottom border and on the sides, okay? So, let's see here, I'm just gonna, Maybe I'll flatten it out this way. Um, oops. is taking some damage um, but I'm not gonna let it bother me too much <laughs> once everything is full and we've put all of our pieces in and there's pictures in here and everything that won't have the opportunity to to kind of bend as much I think so okay so now we can open this up we can actually bring the whole thing over to make it easier on ourselves, okay. So that is what that looks like. Hold on, now I'm now I'm lost. So typically, <laughs> typically it looks like this. So right now we're gonna work in here and here, okay. So if we were just to open up that D panel, we're gonna work on the opposite side of D, on the front side of C, okay but we're just gonna go ahead and pull the whole thing over so that it's flattened out, okay? So, these two pieces. All right, okay, so this was gonna be mostly photos. So, I cut four picture mats, and since I am using like a, a natural white base cardstock, I, I, I'm kind of limited to what color my photo mats are because a regular uh, a snow white, I, I would not like that. Um, of course, black, I would not like that. And maybe craft, but I'm not feeling the craft with this paper collection. So I am probably gonna fall back on something that I do often and that's just finding solid color coordinating cardstock in my collection. And as you can see, this just matches so beautifully with the paper, so. So those, again, just, these are meant for four by six pictures, but they're gonna have to be cut down slightly, okay? So the, these photo mats, for example, they measure, they measure about five and three quarters, minus like a sixteenth of an inch by three and three quarters, like maybe minus a sixteenth of an inch, just because I do want that little border all the way around, okay? And then I cut these. And yes, if you can, if you can't tell, we're really feeling the purple theme right now. <laughs> okay, so that is what these two are going to look like, okay? Okay, so before we adhere those down, what I did was I took a decorative hole punch of mine and I just cut uh, one of these out of my base card stock. Okay, and then I cut that in half down the center. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue those together just so that they're thicker. Okay, and then, so remember this piece here, the front of D, 
we want, I want, a little decorative uh, pull tab, I guess, so that you can grab that to open it, which is not absolutely necessary, but I like the way that looks. So then I've also taken, I've also cut this out of scrap paper. So I need to go ahead and cut that down the center. And it doesn't matter if it's even because the end, or I should say the edge is going to be hidden behind piece D. So it can even overlap this if needed. But look at that, I cut it pretty well. And I'll leave, I'll leave a little border when I glue it on. Okay, so it will look like that. Okay, so that's what I have. So I'll save this other half for something else. And then I'm gonna glue that wherever I want it to go. Maybe up here. No, maybe not, uh, maybe up here. <laughs> back side of D and then of course C. I'm going to go ahead and get these adhered down. Yes, I forgot to do that. So this other half here should be for the other side of this and look at that perfect, perfect fit. So let me glue that on. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to close up D. I'm going to bring the book back how it was meant to be from the front when you're first opening things up. Okay, and then, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this piece and the piece under it and turn it to the right. So you're looking at, the, at B still with that strip on the left. This piece is gonna fit next to that, okay? So again, just measure based on how big you like your borders. Decide what scrapbook paper you want in there, cut it. And then I'm gonna do picture frames here, as our photo mats here as well. So I'm doing four by four pictures. So these measure four and one eighth of an inch because as I've said, I like eighth of an inch borders. So four and one eighth by four and one eighth. And then again, I just measured from here to here from here to here, cut decorative paper based on how big I like my borders. And I thought I had a piece for that. I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know where it went, but <laughs> I will figure that out in a minute. chipboard panel that's covered with cardstock of course and I'm gonna use this this piece of paper to go in there and my space inside measured 10 by 8 and a quarter so I cut mine to 9 and 7 eighths by 8 and 1 eighths okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut out this square and I'm going to make sure that I also go around the outside of her elbow and then the hair right here okay so that I will have a place for a picture. So I'm gonna do that first. Okay, so this is what I've done. So I just cut around her arm and her hair here, okay? And this is gonna go down here, but I want to cut out, um, I want there to be that blue underneath. 
which is a contrasting color, I think, but it, it, you know, it's not too much pink. I love that. So I'm going to cut out, um, I'm, let me see how I want to do this. Okay. So I just took this solid paper and <clears throat> cut about a six by six piece and just glued it directly onto the very, very inside bottom of this chipboard panel. Okay. It's underneath all of the flips and flaps. Okay. And then here's my piece here. And what I did was I cut a slit right here. Okay. It is five inches wide. Or is it four? It's four inches wide, but I did leave a little bit of room because I'm going to assume my picture is four inches wide. So I cut a slit. That's about four and an eighth. And um, I'm just going to, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. And then I inked the inside edges of this frame. And then this is just going to get adhered straight down. Okay, but I'm going to make really sure that I do not put any glue, obviously, underneath of this slit. And I'm going to stay away from the frame. Okay. And then when this is glued down, where's my picture I had? This is not obviously a picture that would go in this. Well, it could. Um, that's what's going to happen. And you'll keep going until it stops. So probably what I would do is I would go ahead and put glue, you know, I would go ahead and make sure that I, I put glue right up until, you know, put glue right up until the picture stops so that the picture can't keep going. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. I don't know if there's a better way to do that, but that's, that's what I came up with. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to put glue on this and adhere it down. slides in. And it's not going to go very far. Okay, so all I did here was I just literally decided what papers I want on each of my pieces and I measured and then I cut the paper and there we have it. So it took me a good 20 minutes to figure out what I wanted just on these four flaps. And that is what I ended up with. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to glue them, glue and adhere them down, okay? piece of purple and then I also cut out this pattern so I did the entire I did an entire rectangle mine measures about five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths and then I simply took this rectangle and I cut from corner to corner and then I took this rectangle and I cut from corner to corner and then I glued them on so I have a little there is a little bit of um, of this cardstock of my base cardstock in between and I can go ahead and insert, oh yeah, I didn't glue this bottom one all the way in. I just glued at the bottom and on the left so I can go ahead and use this as a pocket, okay? This one is adhered all the way down. So we'll do the same thing for this one. So this was a rectangle, but I cut from corner to corner, as was this, okay? 
And if you need to, tr after you have your two triangles ready, if you need to trim just a little bit, go ahead. Because like I said, I want, I want a little bit of cardstock peeking out in between the two. And this one, I will probably, I'll probably have the green, the upper one be the pocket. Yes, so this one I can adhere down all the way. Okay, so then I have him in uh, a little little pocket there as well. Okay. So that is those two. Oh, and look at that. I love how that does that. And then of course I will put some, you know, decor on here right now. I'm just matting. So this will all be dressed up even more. I'll put some stuff here and I'll probably put some stuff here and I might put some wallet size photo mats down on these two pockets. I haven't decided yet, but right now this is just matting. <clears throat> okay, so now on to the fronts of E and F, which are opposite these two. These are the backs. Now we're gonna do the fronts. <clears throat> okay, so I am on the, again, I'm on the front of panels E and F, okay? So all I've done is I've just taken, um, you know, my scrap of paper and decided what I wanna go where. I've measured each of the panels, cut a piece for both of them, okay? So this is going to get adhered down there, and this one is going to get adhered here. And then over on the back side of B, okay? So here's A, wait a minute, wait a minute, A, B, C, D. So here's C and D right here, okay? This is B on the back side of it. We haven't done anything yet. I've cut a piece to go there, okay? And so this is pretty much gonna showcase this picture. I'll probably do some embellishments maybe, I'm not sure. Um, I know I'm going to do waterfalls on this panel here, the one that's on top. So this is the one that closes first. This one closes second, so it sits on top. And I want to put some bulk here to help this spine sit up. So I'm going to do double waterfalls. Okay, right here. There's going to be one there, and there's going to be one here and these are four uh, four by they, they will accommodate four by four pictures so um, so I will we'll go over all that in a minute but for right now let's go ahead and do our waterfalls so what I did so I have two pieces of cardstock that measure four and one eighths of an inch I did not pay attention to the length. I think it's still 12 inches, but they're four and one eighths. And then my waterfalls, they are four and five eighths by four and one eighths. And the reason we have the length by four and five eighths is because you have to score at one half. So then when you score right there, you have four and one eighths by four and one eighths, which will accommodate a four by four picture. So I cut eight of those and I scored on the long side at one half. And then we're going to take four of them and adhere to this and four of them and adhere to that one. And then we'll cut the length of our strips down when we're done. So super quick, super easy. We're just going to apply glue to the outside of the one half inch flap on each of these. Oh my gosh, this glue makes me crazy. I need to boil my tip. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Okay, and we're not mitering these. This is a waterfall. You definitely don't want to miter these. Okay, and then the next one.
cut this strip off so that there is one half of an inch hanging below the last waterfall. Okay, so I have taken the strip and I've cut it down so there's one half left underneath of the four flaps, okay? So one half left. And then here's the other one, okay? So I already assembled that one. So basically we have five waterfalls on each one, okay? And I'm going to use these two cards here on the tops. And I'll probably print out some of the solid cardstock, the solid color uh, scrap of paper, and I will cut those down to four by four, and I'll probably use those here. And so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I am actually gonna use these two cards, and I'm gonna make a closure. So, <clears throat> let me get, Okay, so I need a piece that, two pieces that are about five inches long and we'll say one, one inch wide. Okay, so we have two pieces that are five by one. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and score those with a long side at the top at one inch. At a half inch, sorry. fold and burnish on those score lines and then we're gonna bring our album back in okay I know none of this stuff is adhered down yet okay so I'm on panel E okay remember this these are panels E and F the back sides have the pockets I'm on the one on the left okay so I'll put some paper here just so you can see the edge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my waterfalls where I want them. Just kind of, kind of going to be centered. So I figure out, I'm going to figure out where I want them. And then I'm going to take these, okay, and I'm going to put glue on the outside of the flaps. <clears throat> Just going to make sure that my closure piece is centered where I want my waterfall. Okay, so that's where I want my waterfall. Where I want my waterfall I've got the closure piece centered okay and I'm gonna try to leave as, the same amount of space below this one as above this one okay so it's gonna look like so I know my kids are being loud I apologize That's good. So let me burnish those. Okay, so I've gotten out magnets here, okay? So none of this stuff is adhered yet. <clears throat> I'm j I've just got this here so that we can see the edge of our panel E. Got magnets, so we are gonna go ahead and make it so that our closure pieces will um, adhere to our waterfalls. Now, I did not score this twice, but maybe it would have been a good idea to do that. So, sometimes I think of these things as an afterthought. So, I'm gonna go. There we go. Okay, so, I have basically
basic gray magnets here and they are sticky on the bottom. I very rarely use these, but I've got them in my stash, so I'm gonna get rid of them. <clears throat> having trouble even handling them. Okay, so then we can, we can shut this Make sure that the little score line you just, oh, no, we can't. Oh my goodness, what am I doing here? All right. <laughs> I am a mess. I'm putting these back on. Put those back on, protect our sticky, because we can't do anything until we have adhered the piece that we want on top of panel E. Okay, so let's get that down. Okay, and now we need to go ahead and adhere these down exactly where we want them. Okay, so I want to make sure that is centered. Perfect. from the other magnet that we had clinging to the first, okay? And now we wanna let this mag, that second magnet cling to the top of our waterfall and make sure that the, make sure that that spine is sitting upright and make sure before you stick the waterfall down that it is even. Okay, like so. Interesting. My top one is longer than my bottom one. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Well, maybe not. I think it's just an illusion. All right. So now we are safe to go ahead and glue these on. Get paper 
that we want to mat on both the front and the back of these two closure pieces and then I'm also going to mat the little half inch in between the waterfall flaps. I'll probably just keep the backs plain. Okay, so I still have to adhere this piece of decorative paper. And underneath our waterfalls, I still have this piece, which has not been adhered down. like for this section <clears throat> we are just about done so I'm gonna get to decorating this whole side this whole entire left panel of my folio I'm gonna get to decorating and I will come back and I will show you exactly what I did oh yes and I still have these that I have to adhere down here so I will do that as well and then I will come back and I will show you how I decorate it Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how I decorated here. Uh, so using the ephemera sheets, I used my Cricut design space to uh, single out whatever pieces I wanted, you know, in within Cricut design space. And I offset, I used the offset feature and cut those out. So I have the octopus here, I have the narwhal and a couple of starfish on this photo frame. And I did the same thing here. So I have a bunch of little elements around the frame and I have be a mermaid, make waves. So, you know, I just basically just took some elements and just put it wherever I thought it would look cute. I particularly like this page. I think that looks really adorable. I thought about just covering it with a bunch of uh, floral, but I don't want it to be too much. So I didn't do that. I have an element here that I don't love. I might cover that up with something else. I don't love it, but that's what I did there. And then I just put uh, two pieces of ephemera here. Pictures can still go underneath. I put one here, more amazing. This one is still plain because this paper is so beautiful. I'm just afraid to cover it up. So, and um, I put some flowers on top of the closure pieces here on the waterfalls. And again, this one's not covered up as well because it's just so pretty. So flowers on top of the closure pieces. Um, let's see here, what else? I took the ephemera cards that I made and I put them in each of the pockets. So I've just kind of filled them up. I'll probably make some more. Here I have, I want to be in the sea. That is bumped up on 3D dots, which will help to hold in anything that I put in here. And I was gonna do some wallet size photo mats here. I'm not sure, maybe I'll do that. And then I put this here again. Every time I cut out something from the Cricut, I usually use the offset feature because it cuts it so much more smoothly. It doesn't have to cut all the intricate detail of the actual design because when you do the offset feature, it makes a smooth border so you can cut it so much easier. And then Oh yeah, of course I put photo mats on this flap and you can stick photos behind here and on this one. And that one says you are stronger than the tide. And then on this one, I put a bunch of floral together and, or flowers together, offset that and then I just made a straight edge so that it only, um, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> even if I can't say it. And then I can stick things in there. So that is how I design or decorate it, I should say. Okay, so have fun with it. Um, and yeah, we will move on to matting and then decorating the right panel.